Hey guys, I know it's been a while. Welcome back to the Silver Motion. Today we're going to be talking about 28 weeks later, but before that, I would like to talk about uh, my rating system, which is something we haven't broken down before. Um, I'll keep it super simple. It's pretty much based on time frames and how often I watch movies. Uh, I'll take it from worst to best. Uh, Worst rating you can get from me is a never again, meaning you watch the movie once and you're done. You're never watching that again. The second one is a one-time watch. And a one-time watch is you watch your movie, you love it, it marks you, but you don't want to watch it again for one reason or another. Then after that, you got the once every two to five years, you know, something that you can go for a while without watching. But when you do watch it, you have a good time with it. And then, of course, my favorite movies is the once a year movie, movies that I have to watch every single year. 28 Weeks Later, directed by Juan Carlos Bernadillo, another gorgeous Spaniard, just like me. <laughs> the movie was made in 2007, five years after the very successful 28 Days Later, which I will also review in the future, don't ask me why I decided to do this one first. That's just how I'm rolling these days. It's been 28 weeks since the rage virus outbreak. The government has slowly been taking control back of London and they are getting ready to repopulate the area. It seems people have been surviving in small safe houses scattered through the country and this is where our story begins. Now, this won't be one of those reviews titled 28 Weeks Later Explored or 28 Weeks Later Explained. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and narrate the whole movie, the, the entirety of the movie for you guys, and then at the end uh, give you my thoughts on it. That's not what I want to do here. Uh, there are going to be minor spoilers, um, but simply for the sake of putting you guys in situation. That's all. This movie starts strong, like within the first 10 minutes of the movie, not only do we get a little peek into the lives of the survivors, we get a real peek into some of the gruesome deaths of them as well. What I love and also hate about the beginning is that right away we are faced with very deep and tough moral questions and at first viewing, they might deter you from liking the movie as much. Why? Because it makes you hate who you think it's the main character, the protagonist. It's almost the opposite of the first movie in which we find a very relatable empty canvas, uh, brilliantly played by Cillian Murphy, uh, and slowly the character evolves through the, through the movie, um, you know, through this very, very violent adventure. And at the end, he seems to find this sense of peace and catharsis. Um, this movie, not so much. In 28 weeks later, the story is uh, quite different. Within 10 minutes, you go from loving this guy to despising his face. I am talking, it's pretty bad what he does within the first 10 minutes of the movie and that might be the main reason a lot of people will not grow to like this movie as much but i can tell you that after many years of watching it and me growing as a human being and understanding um, people more understanding human psychology a little more um, it seems the decision he makes at the beginning of the movie makes more sense from a realistic point of view uh, because it is a fight or flight decision and truly i believe everyone wants to think that they are the fight type person but at the end of the day you do not know how you are going to react in that situation i feel like it was around this time when tv shows and movies started using the main character not so much as the hero but more like the villain a good example would be breaking bad which came out around the same time uh, 
the show stars. It's a very re relatable character. You love him. You empathize with him, sympathize with him. But as the show continues, you learn that maybe this guy is not the hero. Maybe he's the villain. I could really go down this rabbit hole of movies that I like to say suffer from what I call the bad taste in your mouth syndrome. And the bad taste in your mouth syndrome is, let me explain, it's a movie or TV show that you watch. And when you're done watching it, you are like, damn, that was a really good movie. That was amazing. The direction was great. The actors were on point. Everything was perfect. Everything was just what I needed. But I'm not watching it again because it leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. It leaves you with a darker view of your world. It leaves you with a bleaker sense of reality because you watch that movie. You know, and a lot of times, uh, at least me, I like to watch a movie because it takes me out of the darkness of this world. You know, with that said, let's go back to my brother, Mr. Bernadillo and his choices as a director. And don't worry, not only are you going to get all of the bad critics here, but you're also going to get all the good stuff because I am sure you're not responsible for all of the mistakes made in this movie. Some of them might have to do with the cinematographer. Some of them might have to do with the screenplay. But today, for the sake of simplicity, you're going to get all of the blame, Juan Carlos, so bear with us. I feel it's a mixed bag of things that worked greatly and some things that, well, simply didn't land for me. I really love the fact that the director is really trying to respect the source material that Danny Boyle initially created with the first movie. Uh, both movies hold a very similar, if not identical, soul. One thing to keep in mind is that the budget for this movie is almost double that of the first one, and sometimes it shows and sometimes it simply doesn't. I do not know how I feel about some of the camera work. The shaky cam really gets old really fast. While in the first movie, it seemed to add to the horror in this one, well, sometimes it just makes it look cheap somehow. It feels like this movie is caught in between two worlds. You know, uh, one team was pulling for, let's really keep the tone of the first movie. And then the second team was like, no, let's make this a super production. And we, the audience, are caught in the middle of that. And as I mentioned before, a lot of it works, but a lot of it simply doesn't. When it comes to the acting in this movie, I am very pleased. Especially every scene with Robert Carlyle and Catherine McCormack, who, by the way, I will always remember as the main reason Scotland is a free country. They are spectacular, and the range of emotions they display in this movie, from love to fear to rage to pure pain, is simply astonishing to watch. Rose Barn and Idris Alba give what I initially thought as a bit of a dry performance, but after further watching, I can definitely say they fit their roles perfectly and they do a really good job. Same can be said about the two kid actors, Heads up, I'm about to butcher these names, okay? So forgive me. We got Imogen Potts and Macintosh Miggleton. They could have easily ruined this movie or elevated it to the next level, the latter not so easily, but instead they simply deliver what I call a solid, proper performance. I've tried to keep spoilers to a minimum and simply talk about things I liked, but mainly things that really didn't work for me in this particular movie, which brings me back to direction and how the horror was handled here. Certain scenes are scary, no doubt, but it never really reaches the level of the first one. It's just not scary, you know? Like, just, just, eh. I mean, gruesome, yeah. But it's not, it doesn't, just, just doesn't hit you like, yeah, you know what I mean. At the end of it all, and after many years of coming back to this movie, I find that it is a solid movie, but the main reason I keep coming back to it is because I watched the first one. So 
it'll you know i'll get the the itch for watching 28 days later and then i watch it and i'm all hyped and i'm like now i'm watching 28 weeks later of course so that's the main reason i keep coming back to this movie which takes me to my final point which is as a standalone movie i would say this is just something that you will watch once every two three four years uh but once you connect it to the first movie it can definitely be something you can watch every year um it is a horror movie it is not necessarily a halloween movie but we happen to watch it every single halloween because we go through probably about 120 movies through the month of october and this is one of them all right thank you guys so much for coming back thank you for watching i really appreciate the support i will see you on the next one